Hey, I'm Bob and I like to make stuff. Today we're going to go inside Inventables to find out what they're working on. So welcome to the Inventables warehouse. This is where we do the picking packing. So put the order on lock. And then all these little things. Uh, uh, location number and the number of the part that you just ordered. And then on these tables, this is where they get picked. That's where they get packed. And then down there where those guys are where it gets shipped. I love building things. I've been building things my whole life. My grandpa taught me how to solder. I made a little go-kart out of a cabinet. In high school I made a roller coaster and when I graduated I wanted to start a company to help people build things. So what we're focused on is helping people go from idea to finished product as quickly and as easily as possible. We're trying to make that transition from it's in your head to it's in your hand inspiring and easy. So if you'd like to increase the size of your Shapoko, this is as big as you can go. So across the other axis, the biggest you can go is a meter. So the reason for that is you get some deflection on the gantry if you go any longer than that. You'd have to stiffen it up in some other way. But this is probably about max size without some serious engineering. In March of this year, we launched Easel. So after you do get your kit together, so you just go to easel.com, and then after you've done your design or imported your design, you can click the button and the machine makes it. We have another announcement later this year. It's the third in a series of three. So the first one was Shapebook 2, second one was Easel. Can't say exactly what it is yet, but stay tuned for the, the big announcement. This will review receiving. Packages come in, and then everything gets processed the same day. That's how we do same day shipping. So we have the clean station and the dirty station, stuff that might have grease or something. People go through all of the different boxes that come in. We have purchase order, labels, and then every night these stations get returned back to the spec that we have on the little. That's how we keep it organized. If you want to make your shape go bigger, but you don't want to have to make your own baseboard, you can do a meter by a meter. <laughs> That's a fun project. Yeah. Then you can make skateboards. Here we have our showcase and examples of some projects that um, folks have done. Like the ladies down at Make ATX in Austin. Uh, they made these coasters that are, they've got laser uh, engraved mistaken lyrics. So uh, we, we really like the kind of projects that um, our customers are doing because they add this element of creativity and craftsmanship um, that you don't get when you get a product at a store like, like a big box retailer. Uh, this one is from a guy who's up in Seattle. His name's Darren Montgomery. It's a piece of Corian and then walnut and then they heat bend the edges there. Beautiful. And then these are coasters also made out of Corian. They're from a guy uh, down in Dallas, Texas. He's got a uh, company called Minifab. One of the locations is, is in Six Flags uh, over Texas. So you walk into his shop and then you get to make the product that you walk out with. Uh, it's pretty cool. He's got a couple of Shapokos, he's got a laser. And then this last one is uh, from a, a 10 or 11 year old girl. I can't remember how old she is, but she's a young girl. Her name is Lily Bourne. And uh, her grandfather had Parkinson's disease. And so he would spill his coffee. So she took our hand moldable plastic, it's like eight bucks for like a half pound. She took her own cup and made three little legs for it. And he used this, actually, he was actually used this cup for about a year. Then her dad got a 3D printer and she 3D printed a version of the cup. And then she did a crowdfunding campaign. She raised about $25,000. Uh, and she's like 10 or 11. And then this is the, the final cup. Um, just, the, just like a ceramic cup or a porcelain cup that you would get if you went to the store, except the difference is it has three legs. Cool. Pretty amazing. And so it's, it's a testament to not just the fact that you can make all this stuff with low cost digital manufacturing tools, but who can make it? It's really anyone with an idea and some passion. So growing up, I love to build things, but I always wanted a secret passageway in my house. 
Turns out I got one at work. Because this is also a secret door to our software development team. So right now, there's about a thousand people in the beta program. We just last week rolled it out to every Shapeoko owner. So if you own a Shapeoko, you can now get access. We're, we're announcing new features just about once a week. So if you're on the mailing list, you're getting updates with the new features. Um, and we're gonna continue to build on it for the foreseeable future. It's awesome. It's totally making it possible for more people to start getting involved in 3D carving. And we plan to just keep building and building and building for a long time. When people run into either bugs or feature requests, we're responding to everyone and then fixing the things that we can, adding things that we can. Uh, we also do have a roadmap that we're working on that is really focused on making the experience of going to, from idea to finished product easier. We recognize that when we launched Shapeoka 1, a tool chain, was a bit challenging for, if, if you had a technical background, no big deal, but if, if this is new to you, it was kind of hard. You gotta do your CAD, you gotta do your CAM, then you gotta do your machine control, and, so, and you gotta know what all those three things are and find them and everything. And so our goal with Easel is to really make it so it's not about the tool, it's about your idea. And so we hope over the next year we really improve that and then eventually, very shortly, we'll be making it uh, available to everyone for free. We're at R&D Lab workshop. Everybody in Amenables gets free access to the machines and they also get a budget, we call it the build it budget, to make whatever they want. Drill presses, jigsaws, bandsaws, uh, compound miter saw, sander. This is a Roland uh, MDX40. We've got a big shape logo um, for when you're trying to do bigger projects like skateboard or maybe some furniture. We've got the little shape logos. Um, you'll notice we, we've decided to upgrade all of our shape logos to the 300 watt DC spindle. And that's because after you sort of get going, you really want a little bit more robust uh, solution on the spindle. We also added the upgraded waste boards and the clamps. It just makes it so much easier to get work in and out. And these little cranks make it easy to um, move the Z-axis up and down so you don't have to get in here. Um, and then just to clean up the wiring a little bit, we added uh, the drag chain. Just makes it look more like a pro machine, um, cleaning up those wires. A switch for the spindle, so it's not plugged in right now, but you can control it with a switch and then a restop um, just in case things go crazy. And then over here we have our fasteners. And this Shipoko is just for our software engineering team that's working on Easel. So they're the only ones that are allowed to touch it. And then every week after they go through and do upgrades or bug fixes, they run the tests on this machine to make sure that um, Basically everything they changed didn't break anything. Um, over here is our electronic, electronics lab. Um, so it basically has everything you need to prototype small electronics. And today it looks like we're working on a chair that has nothing to do with electronics. I'm not sure about where that came from. This is our laser cutter. Um, it's a 40 watt full spectrum. And then we have a whole uh, section of 3D printers. So we've got the cube. Up Plus, we got the Form 1 from Ford Labs, a couple of MakerBots, um, and then some assorted projects that we've made just to kind of show people what you can do uh, with the machines, including big skateboards. This was actually made by one of the guys on the Shapeoko forum named Brandon Fisher. Did it on his Shapeoko, obviously a, one that he made bigger and then sent it into us. He's got the Shapeoko Twitter handle on there. Big thanks to Zach and Michael over at Inventables for letting me come in and, and walking me around and showing me everything. I had a really good time and they're super nice. If you want to see my CNC machine that came from Inventables, check that video out right there. Otherwise, i got a bunch more projects you can check out right here. Get in touch with me on Facebook and all that stuff. And I'll be back with a new project video really soon. See you guys next time. Bye.